Research and Environmental Education Foundation. A mouthful, um, but we like to call it Main Tree for short. We are a nonprofit organization whose mission is to educate and advocate for the sustainable use of Maine's forests. Main Tree took ownership of the Holt Research Forest in 2014. This is one of the longest running forest ecosystem studies in the state of Maine. It started in 1983. It has historically been led by the University of Maine. Jack Witham, uh, it has been his, his life work to study this oak pine forest and his research and the data around that research have been used internationally. Uh, it's uh, certainly a project of great acclaim. Uh, under Main Tree's ownership, we are focusing now on you know, how to deliver applied research for small non-industrial uh, woodland owners and because of the location of this forest in southern Maine on the Maine coast there's great opportunity to engage with forest land owners and think about the questions that they would ask uh, about how to sustainably manage their forests for a variety of reasons whether it, it is uh, approaches to harvests whether it's adapting to climate change whether it's now addressing here issues like the impacts of deer on oak regeneration well, there are lots of questions that we think landowners may be looking to ask and we want to use this as a platform to help them find the answers. Uh, the entire property is about 350 acres. 50 acres of that is salt marsh. The remaining 300 acres is primarily forested. The property is bisected by a town road. It's divided uh, into an east and a west section. We're currently in the east section, which is the largest contiguous block. And this is where there's an ongoing forest harvest operation. And it is also the site where we have a 40 hectare research area since the beginning of the study in 1983. Hope Forest is unique as a, as a long-term study site um, because it's more akin to other small woodlots within the state of Maine. In 1988, there was a research harvest conducted and data was collected to look at the response of the forest to that harvest. But it's now been 32 years and we are back here um, harvesting again, not only providing economic benefit where we've hired a forester, we've hired a logging crew, we're sending these products off to pulp and paper mills, to sawmills, to biomass facilities, but we're then going to study the response of the forest to that. So, you know, if we're going to make it our mission to educate and advocate for the sustainable use of the forest, we we are hoping to model that here at the Holt Research Forest and to share that story of that work broadly with the community. I'm a consulting forester with Mid Main Forestry and my role here is to work with the logger to achieve the landowner's objectives. And the goal here is to improve the growth of the forest, leave the best trees to grow, encourage new regeneration and release existing regeneration. Part of my role as forester here is to work with the logger to achieve what we want to achieve on the ground. And oftentimes I'll mark the trees for the logger to harvest. In the case of Trees Limited, we have a written harvest prescription. So the logger is choosing the trees to harvest. And that includes leaving the best uh, white pine, the best oak, and the best red spruce. We're harvesting hemlock in the process of being killed by the hemlock woolly adelgid, unfortunately leaving a mix of other species like a red maple and white birch, trying to leave a mix of tree species and sizes and age classes to create a more resilient forest for the future. I'm operating a processor. This is a Komatsu 911.5, and it is a purpose-built thinning processor. That means it takes the tree off the stump, it takes the limbs off the tree, and it merchandises the tree into all its various segments, whether it's logs or pulpwood. Over the decades of working in the woods, we've put a lot of our own research into finding machinery that has a, a light footprint and it's low ground pressure. And this particular system, some people refer to as a short wood system or cut to length system, the delimbing process takes place, right, takes place right in front of me and I lay the brush down in a certain way so that it works like a snowshoe. But we're always looking at uh, the, the drainage or the lack thereof of the ground. You know, we help keep the ground stable by virtue of that brush, which becomes our footprint and our mulch on every trail. After that, we're just, we're making openings in the forest canopy, just so the trees have room to expand both laterally and vertically. We're taking pine logs, we're taking spruce logs, both high and low quality. 
We're taking hardwood pulp and a little bit of softwood pulp, although that market doesn't exist any longer while we're talking. Also, we're doing hardwood logs and uh, uh, commercial firewood too. One of the things that we want to take into consideration since we own this property, there's a conservation easement that will keep this as a forest forever. That doesn't mean that the, the world around this forest or within this forest isn't changing. And with climate change, understanding how the forest will adapt, one of the reasons we lean heavily on a professional forester is to take a look at how species are responding here. And this particular harvest is intended to ensure that we can provide opportunities for a diverse set of tree species to call this place home because we don't know what the future uh, will look like uh, in the forest, which species will be the most resilient in the face of climate change. Before I assess the site, I determine what the landowner's objectives are for the harvest. And it's usually a combination of uh, improving the health of the forest, timber for production for income, improving wildlife habitat, creating recreation opportunities. At a given site, I look at the soils, I look at the health of existing trees, uh, I look at access challenges and opportunities, I look at what the existing regeneration is here, I look at things like skid distance and trying to match the right operator for the lot. So to have a successful uh, timber operation, it's kind of like a three-legged stool. Of course, you need to have the landowner who owns the land, the logger who's gonna be doing the harvesting, and the forester's the person who is the landowner's eyes and ears on the ground to make sure that their objectives are achieved. And also to work with the logger by finding access trails and stream crossings. Some of the forest health issues that we thought about for this harvest. Uh, one is the hemlock woolly adelgid, which is fairly common in this part of Maine. And there are some hemlock trees on this property that have actually been killed or are dying because of de severe defoliation by the adelgid. That's probably the biggest insect and disease problem here right now. Um, there are very few invasive species, plant species, on this forest, which is great, and it's also kind of unusual. Oftentimes, dealing with invasive species is a very important priority for landowners. So the harvest that we're looking at here is the first harvest to take place since 1988. It's a harvest that's overdue because of the condition of the forest and it should result in significantly improved forest health and growth. We have three six hectare areas where we're gonna focus our studies post harvest. And within each of those six hectares, we're going to leave 1.5 hectares unharvested. And those 1.5 hectare areas will be our new control. But once the harvest has ceased, we will be uh, reinstalling all of the marker pins, uh, repainting lines. The grid system is very important to our database uh, because we have sampling locations very distinctly marked so that we can go back and resample the same sites and that gives us important comparison information over time. So we're here in, in the garden pulling some weeds and pulling some of the, the good crops out but there's been a lot of change here at the Holt Research Forest and the ability to have continued that long-term study everything from the response of, of small mammals. Our researcher has highlighted you know examples like the move of the northern squirrel out of this property over the last 30 years and the move of southern squirrels into this property. So the transition of wildlife, but understanding what species of trees are struggling to regenerate, the opportunities to focus in particular on oak with the overabundance of deer, in particular in southern Maine, we find some challenges with oak regeneration and we want to make sure we can study how the forest responds from the harvest, specifically some opportunities we might have to encourage oak regeneration and how we share that more broadly. Post-harvest, we hope to continue most of the studies that we have in previous years. Uh, we're especially interested in the forest regeneration. One of the things that we'd like to focus on is regenerating oak and we really hope to be able to come up with some methods and some ways to maximize our growth of oak regeneration. Of course one of the problems is overabundant deer populations and we hope to be able to find ways to minimize the damage that they are going to do to the oak regeneration. Uh, some other in areas of interest include the herbaceous plant community. We've seen a significant decrease in the abundance of a lot of these understory species that grow on the forest floor. And this again is primarily due to deer herbivory. 
So our hope is that we can restore some of this habitat and seeing fruit within the forest floor. Bird territory mapping is an important uh, part of the study. Um, birds respond very quickly to any change in successional stage of the forest. So it'll be very interesting to look at the changes in bird populations. Uh, some of the canopy species will likely decrease while we will get some early successional species back into the forest. And those are species that had disappeared as the gaps from previous harvest disappeared. In partnership with Trees Limited, our logger and Barry Rusala, our forester, we held a couple of both pre-harvest tours with the community of Rausick and other partners, as well as a public tour of the harvest operation underway uh, to give the public a chance to learn about the research here at this property, but also to learn about our long-term management goals and to understand directly from a logger how they approach their work and the level of professionalism and care that they take to leave the forest better than they found it. A couple things that need to be understood that used to be understood in our culture when people are more tied to the land. We cannot do forestry without industry. And when you thin a woodlot, all you do is expedite what the land does all by itself. Some of the objectives to logging, you get an excellent example when you look to the right here, you've got four and five state height stages of forest. Look right to your right, you've got a young pine stand that's 10 feet high, you've got a little bit older pine stand that's 35 feet high, you've got a birch tree that's 50 feet high, and then you've got pine trees that are 70 feet high. So when something comes in and takes out that birch tree, there's something there to replace it. When something takes that down, there's something there to replace it. Maine is an aging culture because we don't think beyond ourselves. And you've got to have room for the next generation or someday you wake up, you have nothing. The great diversity in tree sizes, tree heights, creates a more resilient forest in the end. And the small trees you see growing there, it's what's called advanced regeneration, which are young trees already growing. And now they have some more light to grow and there's more sunlight coming down. So there'll be new trees growing up as well. So you'll be basically creating more of an uneven aged forest here. Round the two round ones that actually roll the tree through the head. The saw actually fells the tree and then he'll tip it. And so he has adjustments on that. And that tree will go through that head and those arms will clip that off like you strip a fern. And then the wheel, there's a, a cog in there that rolls on the tree and when it finds its measurement, the same saw cuts it off. CLP was born to train loggers on safety because we had a very bad ratio. We were paying 50 cents on the dollar for insurance on our employees then. So he created a safety program. We were taught CPI, we were taught felling techniques, and you were taught things, and it, got, it brought everybody up to a standard, and it brought insurance costs down, and eventually it was a success story. It brought that to a point where you could afford to insure somebody, and people got safer. And then, we have, in later years, we also ascribe to what's called the Master Logger Program. Not everyone is a Master Logger, but it is, is a third-party audited system where we make our company transparent and we abide by above and beyond so to speak standards to promote you know excellence in the industry. Not only here at, at Holt as we've conducted this harvest and we've been fortunate to have a couple of small groups come through uh, on a tour not only to understand the state of this forest but to understand why we're conducting the harvest, uh, how we expect the forest to begin to respond uh, to that harvest over time. Uh, we really believe at Main Tree that this is a model uh, to continue, not only here at Holt, but partnering with other woodlot owners where harvests are taking place to help bring programming and opportunities for the public to understand forest health, understand sustainable forest management, understand the ecology of Maine forests, but also to understand the economy around Maine's forests and, and the jobs and livelihoods and communities that Maine's forests sustain. If a landowner comes and visits the harvest that we've done here, I'd like them to think about a lot of different things. Uh, one of the first things landowners usually think about is slash, which is all the branches on the ground around us that you can see. And the slash here is here, it's down close to the ground where it'll rot and put nutrients back in the soil. And before it does that, it'll be providing habitat for wildlife. It's, so it's actually ecologically a good thing to leave the slash here. This can be yours too, you can do the same thing. Uh, the bookends of landowners used to be, I'm either not gonna cut anything and then when I do, I'm gonna flatten it or I'm never gonna touch it or I'm gonna overcut it. I'm gonna cut it every five minutes. And really the truth isn't in either of those options. 
you know, by working it just like you would a good vegetable guide and you really promote the growth of the better tree, you get a better product and you shorten the timeline between growth and harvest. So you get the, the value of time management with your money. Every time we, we thin out a woodlot, we are securing our future employment. So yes, and, and I'm not just saying that, we've made our career uh, visiting and revisiting many, many clients that have become our good friends and, and acquaintances. Another thing for landowners to look at when they're seeing a harvest like that is to do what foresters do, which is try to imagine what the forest will look like in the future, 5, 10, 20 years from now, or even farther into the future. What's left in the forest is more important than what's cut.